Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I'm looking at a brand new Era 1 train pack from Hornby. In terms of Era 1 locomotives, we've already seen quite a bit from Hornby. We've had Stevenson's Rocket, which was pretty awesome, and we've had Lion, which was pretty good as well. Today's train pack contains Hornby's third Era 1 locomotive, and I'm quite interested to see what it's like. So the pack is this. It is the new Hornby, Liverpool and Manchester number 58 Tiger train pack. Tiger, of course, being the sister or brother, I don't know, locomotive to Lion. This is a new train pack, it's only just come out. The RRP on Hornby's website is £229.99, which makes it around £10 cheaper than the Lion train pack that I looked at last year. And if you'd like to check it out, look up there. Does this mean that it's better value than the Lion train pack? No, and if you don't know why, you will find out later on. I bought this, however, from the Model Centre for £206.99. Great service, as always, from the Model Centre. Decent little discount there as well. But there is one elephant in the room when it comes to the Tiger locomotive, and that is accuracy. Of course, Hornby's Lion locomotive was based on the 20th century rebuild of the locomotive, and quite a few people fairly well documented the accuracy issues in that model. It certainly wasn't a good facsimile of the original Lion in the 1800s condition. Now, Tiger never got a rebuild like Lion did. Tiger was scrapped in the 1800s. And yet, Hornby's Tiger locomotive seems to be based on Hornby's Lion locomotive. Now, if there were accuracy issues in Lion, there's no hope for Tiger, is there? But there's some good news. First of all, there's very little information out there to accurately tell us exactly what Tiger would have looked like. So if you run Tiger on your Era 1 layout, if you've got one, and you claim that it's realistic, people will have a hard time proving you wrong. Secondly, this is not just a Lion locomotive that has been rebadged. Hornby have made an attempt to make their Tiger look a little bit more like what the real Tiger would have looked like. It's got a different firebox, different chimney, so it's not just a cheap rebadge of Lion, which is pretty good. However, in terms of the coal wagons that we get inside here, I think those are going to be a little bit harder to justify, a little bit harder to explain away. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you're in for a bit of a nasty surprise there. But either way, I'm interested in Tiger. Let's get this out, let's see what it's like. So here is the new Tiger packaging, and as you can see, it's very similar to the presentation box that the Hornby Lion train pack came in. Quite a light box, and if this is anything like Lion, the locomotive and the rolling stock as well, not very substantial, not very hefty. We now know that Rapido's Lion is going to be quite a lot heavier than Hornby's because there's a lot more die cast on it. But because Hornby's Era 1 rolling stock is so light and quite free rolling, the locos don't struggle too much with it until you start building quite large trains, which wouldn't be too realistic for this era. Anyway, let me show you the back of the box because you can see the product code here. So this is R30233. It's the Liverpool and Manchester number 58 Tiger, Liverpool and Manchester Railway. I'm not sure why that's kind of on there twice. And then if I open up the front, you can see we have the loco and some coal wagons. They don't mention the coal wagons very much in the listings and such, and certainly not on the packaging. They seem to focus on the locomotive. Now, why would that be? Why would they not want to draw too much attention to these coal wagons? Hmm, I don't know. Let's look on the other side. As you can see, we've got a photo of the locomotive there, except it clearly isn't. There are no photos as far as I know. This looks like it's the model that's been sort of edited onto a background. And then you've got a bit of information on the Tiger in real life. Again, there's very little there. So these paragraphs, um, they say a lot without saying very much at all. But let's have a look. Let's see if we can get this out. And let's see what the quality of the loco and the rolling stock is going to be like. All right, let's pull it out from the bottom, which is similar to where Hornby pulled their rolling stock, I think. We'll find out, perhaps I'm being unfair. Okay, so 
As you can see, they haven't been bothered to change the instructions because it still says Lion. But yeah, this locomotive is basically Lion with a slightly different body. Fair enough. And then inside you've got the same instructions as we found on Lion. So a little bit about lubrication, fitting accessories. Hopefully we still have some crew to fit. That would be nice. Fitting DCC, yeah, these are DCC ready. And uh, you've got the uh, coal insert as well there. Shows where that goes. And then nothing too much on the back. So with that, let's have a look at what we actually get in this pack. Let's start with the accessories. What have we got here? So here we've got the coupling chains. We've got three of these coupling chains, which allows you to couple the loco to the wagons and then the wagons together. So that's fair enough. Two more accessories bags yet though. So in here we've got one man. This is who I think I called the wizard or something before. He seems to be doing some sort of odd incantation with his hands. But yep, yeah, nice painted figure. I um, think it's I think it's probably plastic, but it is painted, which is good. And then I guess we've got his pal. Yep, yeah, here we go, fireman in a nice top hat. And you can see he's got his shovel and he's also nicely painted, which is pretty cool. Right, let's have a look at the loco then. Not lion, but tiger. Now, I hate this packaging for pulling stuff out of it because these are fragile locos and they're crammed into this foam. Anyway, Let's see if I can pull this out. Here we go. So, Tiger, looking a little different from Lion. It clearly is substantially the same model, not too much different from the Lion, of course, but it does say Tiger on it. It does have a different chimney, and as you can see, the smoke box is significantly different. On first glance, it does seem to be quite nicely made, just like Lion was, really. As far as other differences between the two locos, though, I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to put them next to each other and see if there's anything else I can spot. But uh, yeah, the lion was lovely, and this looks lovely as well. So there you go, Tiger. No comment on how accurate it is, but uh, it's certainly an interesting little trinket, isn't it? Okay, let's put the loco to one side, and let's have a look at the coal wagons. Here we go. Very, very tiny wagons, these. I'm going to push these out from underneath. Okay, wagon the first. Here it is. All right, so what's the story with these wagons then? Well, of course, they are not coal wagons. They are literally Stevenson's rocket tenders that have been painted brown. Now, people have said to me, no, that's not the case. They're not. Yes, they are. Here is Stevenson's rocket tender. As you can see, this is almost exactly the same thing. It just doesn't have the barrel. And the third side of the wagon has now been sort of added on. I think it has just been glued on, in fact, so that they probably haven't even had to change the tooling. So all they've designed freshly for this was this end piece to be glued in place. The rest of it is literally Stevenson's rocket tender. And I think that's a little bit unforgivable, particularly given the price of three of these. Look at that. What an absolute rip-off. But you haven't got to put up with that. I, personally, am coming up with a solution to this problem, so stay tuned for that. I think you'll be quite satisfied by it, as am I. Anyway, let's have a look at the others. Let's see if they are the same. I think they probably are, because there's no decoration on them uh, or anything like that. No numbers, no lining. Literally just a brown wagon with some black planking on the inside. Basic as can be. And yes, that does seem to be the same thing. It's even got the same axles as the Hornby Rocket Tender with the insulating section in the center so that the wheels can pick up. Obviously, these wheels don't need to pick up because it's a wagon, but still, I couldn't even change the wheels around. <laughs> Crazy. I think it's possibly one of the most lazy and contemptible things I've seen Hornby do in quite a long time. And that's saying something. <laughs> so there we go, third wagon. Yeah, I mean, the finish is nice. They don't look bad or anything. Yeah, they are fine. Incredibly lightweight. I mean, we're talking, I would be surprised if this was more than 10 grams. But uh, yeah, hopefully they'll look all right with Tiger. Speaking of Tiger, let's have a little bit of history on the real Tiger, and then we'll take a much closer look at the level of detail. Just like Lion, the Liverpool and Manchester Tiger was an early steam locomotive built by Todd Kitson and Laird of Leeds in 1838. 
Lion and Tiger were part of an order of six locomotives by the railway, and they were intended to be freight locomotives, although of course they did do passenger runs as well. The cost of these locos was about £1,000 each, which equates to around £150,000 in today's money. While Lion was somewhat fortunate in that it was preserved after many years of abandonment as a pumping engine, if I remember correctly, Tiger was not quite as lucky. She was rebuilt in 1841, but still, even then, newer and better locomotives outperformed her, and by 1850, the engine was deemed useless and was withdrawn and scrapped. This model by Hornby, they say, represents the locomotive in its later days, so presumably after that 1841 rebuild. So there it is, up close and personal for you, Hornby's brand new Tiger locomotive. And yeah, I like this thing. I liked Lion and I'm a big fan of this as well. This model is substantially the same as Lion though. And as I said earlier on, that is a bit problematic in terms of accuracy because Lion was substantially altered during her 1900s rebuild. And as I understand it, that rebuild went far beyond fitting a different chimney and firebox. And in fact, one of the sources I read said that the Loco's frames were a completely different length after the rebuild. And so basing this Tiger locomotive on Hornby's rebuilt Lion is never going to produce a completely realistic locomotive. And the only way they would have been able to get that would have been to have retooled this completely, which would be pointless anyway, really, because nobody really knows exactly what Tiger would have looked like. So I think this is the closest we can get. Hornby had a choice, do we do this and do we not do it? And I am glad that they decided to do it. It's a cool loco at the end of the day. And it's clear that they have made some attempts to differentiate this Tiger loco with the Lion locomotive. As you can see, the major one here is the firebox, completely different. We don't have the high shine firebox, which we know was a sort of addition during the Lion rebuild. So perfectly good and correct that this does not have that. It is just a plastic piece, it's not die cast, so it doesn't contribute to the weight of the model. Although it is quite complex, you can see there's lots of riveting on the piece. The safety valve section at the top as well as the whistle, that is more complex. You can see all of the detailing on there. And there's even some separately fitted handrails on that piece as well. The other big difference is of course the chimney. This doesn't have the copper top. Although they haven't simply just removed that copper top, it does actually have a completely different design to it. You can see there's rivets along it and such. And there are other subtle differences as well, such as the lack of a handrail on the front of the smoke box. Where they got that information from, I'm not entirely sure, but it just makes the model a little bit different from Lion. The livery is also a little bit different as well. As I understand it, that's accurate. The Lion livery was embellished a little bit in the 1920s. This is a slightly toned down livery. You don't have the red frames, for instance. These are just painted black. I'm not sure if this wood texture would have been realistic for Tiger, but they've gone with it anyway. And noticeably, they've still gone with the brassy sort of banding on this boiler although the quality of the paint here is not as good. Now they could have dulled it down deliberately because the Tiger livery wouldn't have been as flashy, but to my mind, if they really wanted to do that deliberately, they wouldn't have come with a cheaper looking brass paint. They would have gone with something like black or something. So I just think because they haven't got the high shine firebox, they haven't got that high quality paint on hand. And so they seem to have used this instead, which I think does look poorer. Anyway, let's look at some of the details then. Well, first of all, let's talk about the weight. It comes in at 95 grams, which is very similar to the Hornby Lion. The frames here are made of metal, which is good. So you've got a bit of die cast on here, even if the bulk of the body is plastic. The smoke box though is made of metal. That's a die cast piece. And surprisingly enough, so is the chimney. So you've got a little bit of weight from that. The front buffer beam is very much the same as on Lion, so you have got the real chain on the front. I was really impressed by that feature. Yeah, that's really cool. And the dumb buffers, of course. The wheels and the coupling rods, they seem absolutely unchanged, but there's a look at those anyway. You've also got the sort of valve gear modeled between the frames, which is kind of best viewed from below, but you can catch glimpses of it from other angles, I guess. The boiler detailing is much the same as you can see, and we've also got the Tiger nameplate. Not massively high quality nameplates these, but they do the job, as you can tell. 
The cab area is pretty interesting as well. It's got exactly the same lattice work design on the cab sides, as you can see, and the cab detailing is identical as well. I can't see any difference here, except this handle on the other side is very, very slightly different, but unless you have both models next to each other, that's not really something you're going to notice. The tender is exactly the same as the Hornby Lion tender, quite nicely detailed, nothing too special about it. If you'd like to see this in a little more detail, again check out my Lion train pack review. Yeah, generally in terms of the detail and the quality, it's very much the same as Lion. Quite nicely put together, very nicely detailed, and all in all not too bad for the price. I do however think that this train pack in general, considering all of its contents, is far poorer value than the Hornby Lion pack though, because of course Lion came with three proper coaches, which do seem to be accurate and they're much more complex and detailed. That was only £10 more expensive than this pack with Tiger, which came with these monstrosities. And I'm going to be honest, I'm not going to spend long talking about these awful wagons because they're not realistic, they're not detailed, and uh, they're very, very sort of cheaply made. So all plastic, no separately fitted detail on here, and in fact no real decoration apart from the axle boxes and the springs and such which have been picked out in the black. Yeah, that's, that's it. They don't come with loads, they don't have any extra detailing at all except for this end door, which is the only new part of the model really. That's just a molded piece that glues in to make this a wagon as opposed to Stevenson's rocket tender. And of course, you've got the wooden planking effect on the inside instead of the barrel and the coal load as you would see on Stevenson's rocket. So Hornby could not be bothered to design a new wagon from scratch, which I think is a pity because it does somewhat spoil this train pack. Instead, they've decided to just recycle existing models, which at the price, you know, £206.99 is what I paid, £229.99 is the RRP. That's not too good. You'd expect a little bit more effort to be put into such an expensive train pack. But I do have a solution for fixing this awful wagon problem. Hornby could not be bothered to come up with their own proper coal wagon for Era 1 or the Liverpool and Manchester but I can be bothered. So here are Hornby's so-called coal wagons based on Stevenson's Rockets tender, and here are my coal wagons, designed from scratch to be these Liverpool and Manchester coal wagons based on drawings. These are going to be available. They're not ready yet, unfortunately. It's gonna be a few months and I'm yet to confirm the details, but I can tell you that they are gonna be cheaper than Hornby's in the region of about half price or better. They're gonna have more features than Hornby's. They're going to be more accurate than Hornby's. Hornby's are not particularly free rolling because of how light they are, I think. As you can see, the best I could get one of these to roll was just underneath the passenger footbridge. Well, mine are much better than that. They roll two to three times the distance. And of course, most importantly of all, these are not based on Stevenson's rocket tender, which ought to be reason enough. So they're not ready yet, but I thought I would let you know now so that you can save your money and not buy these travesties and you'll be able to get twice as many of my wagons, which I think are better actually, um, for the same amount of money. Anyway, Tiger down onto the track and I've already filmed the first performance test so I'll show you how that went in just a second. Now with these I don't go into too much detail, I don't really go into disassembly because they are fragile and I don't really think there's much to see inside. But let's talk about the basics. They're still using this cumbersome drawbar and wire assembly which looks a mess doesn't it, particularly given how small the loco is. I said this with Lion but I do think a more intuitive a more subtle and ultimately a more modern uh, solution would have been a lot better here. The tender though does have pickups on it, so all four tender wheels have pickups and the loco driving wheels also have pickups as well, so you've got four pickups going to each line, that leads to a nice reliable loco. The loco driving axles sit in proper bearings, which is a really high quality feature, I like that very much, and even the non-driven axle on the loco has proper bearings on it as well, which should reduce drag and improve the haulage of the loco. The DCC socket for the loco is underneath this hatch in the firebox. I'm not going to disassemble it this time, but uh, it is under there, I promise you, and so the loco is quite easy to chip, which is very good. 
Hornby's website does say that this just has a three-pole motor, which is a shame. Stevenson's Rocket had a five-pole motor, and it's a much better crawler, it must be said. The gauging is fine though, 14.3mm back-to-back quite reliably, which is fairly close to the standard, if a little bit loose, which should help this around curves and such. So I think considering the size of the Loco, the quality of the mechanism is pretty high. Now though, let's jump back and let me show you the performance test. Moment of truth then, does Tiger run and how well does Tiger run? I'm expecting this to be exactly the same as the Lion locomotive, so there shouldn't be any big surprises, but this should be a good test at least of consistency. So here we go, forwards direction, does the loco run? A little bit of juice. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, it did start. Now, that's reminded me, Lion wasn't a great crawler. It did sort of just jump in at a higher speed. And uh, right out of the box, even though this hasn't been run in yet, this seems to be doing the same sort of thing. So, yeah, crawlers, these are not. I will run this in, of course. I'll let it have the full time, and we'll try it again. And uh, if it's still not a good crawler, then I will let you know, and uh, we will make it official. But, no, I mean, it is good and smooth. Lion was good, smooth, and quiet and this seems to be as well, which is good. Uh, let me run it past at 50% speed for you. Yeah, maybe a little bit speedy, but nothing too bad. Remember, this is era one. They had a top speed of about 40 miles per hour. I would say that's not far off. Let's try it at full speed. Yeah, I would say maybe it could afford to have been geared down a little bit and then the lower speeds would have been favoured a bit more because, frankly, that's what you want with Era 1. Um, the faster they go, the less realistic it is. But anyway, let's have a look and see what the crawl's like. I'm just going to really gradually ease this up, and we'll see at what speed this loco kicks in. So here we go. I'm turning up, turning up, still turning up. It's weird. There's not really any buzzing or anything. Still turning Still turning. Oh, there we go. So yeah, that's kind of um, shoddy, really. Can I slow down into a better crawl? No, it kind of just stops. Let's try and slow down into a crawl the other way. So let's get it going, turn it down. See if I can use its momentum. No, it really won't sustain. So yeah, it's fine. The performance is okay. It's a small loco, so there's not a lot of room in there. At the high speeds, the performance is great but don't expect to crawl on analog. On DCC, I'm not too sure what the difference would be. Anyway, let's send this off around the track. Let's get it run in. Here we go. So, as you can see, just like Lion was, really, this is a beautiful runner. It's performing excellently, handling the curves nicely. It does have plenty of pickups, of course, so it's not going to be cutting out on random bits of track. And even on points, it is perfectly reliable. So, I think, just like with Lion, really, given the size of the locomotive, its performance is relatively impressive. It's good and reliable, nice and smooth, not too noisy no issues in the performance at all. So that's fantastic. I'm gonna keep this running in then. It's gonna have 30 minutes in this direction, then it'll have 30 minutes backwards, and then I'll try and couple it up to some of the wagons, including mine, <laughs> And we'll see how it gets on with a load. So don't go anywhere, I will see you shortly. So there we go, that is the running in finished. And yeah, that was fine. Obviously it didn't derail, no problems or anything like that little bit of sort of whistling coming from the tender, in fact you can hear it. That's just the pickups sort of uh, squeaking along the wheels. If you've got some conductive lubricant, that would really help that out. Anyway, what is the performance like now? Is the crawl any better? The, the crawl from Lion didn't really improve, so I'll be surprised if this does, but let's try. I'm easing it up right now. No, sadly not. Perfectly smooth at this speed, don't get me wrong, but a better motor and a better gearing, I think, would have really served this loco well. But it's fine, it is good and reliable at the high speeds. Nice and smooth too, as you can see. The pulling power, as you'd expect, is not fantastic. It comes in at 0.05 newtons, which isn't very much, but it should be enough for this to haul a good amount of Era 1 rolling stock, which generally is quite light and easy to haul. So, with that in mind, I've got all six of my coal wagons, the good ones and the bad ones, lined up on the track. I'm sorry, I'll stop. Uh, so let's go and attempt a coupling. Obviously, these locos and this rolling stock cannot couple autonomously. You have to intervene. 
but uh, we'll do that anyway and then we'll get it going with some rolling stock so here we go let's go couple okay let's just get it reasonably nearby then there we go that should do and i'll pop round and couple so yeah these hornby couplings um I'm not a fan of them. They are very, very fiddly. They don't always stay coupled. Um, yeah, it is, however, oh, it is, however, a realistic solution. They obviously look a lot better than NEMS when it's all coupled together. Um, but it's certainly not something you can buy for youngsters or whatever. I think it's still come apart again. And uh, yeah, because it's just very frustrating. It's, it's frustrating for me as an adult. So you can just imagine what it would be like for uh, somebody younger or indeed older, <laughs> you know. Not great if you've got limited dexterity either, which isn't funny, shouldn't be laughing at that. Right, off we go. So yeah, I would say that speed looks fairly decent, doesn't it? Not too fast, given that it's freight. On the middle line, I have the other star of the show, which is of course Lion, and she's got some passenger coaches, which I think are, are a lot nicer. And in terms of value for money, two or three of these as well as one of the blue ones, I think, was in with Lion, has much better value than with Tiger, even though the Tiger set was £10 cheaper. It's only £10. And then on the inside line, I have Stevenson's Rocket with the other terrible Liverpool and Manchester rolling stock corn be produced. Whether these flatbeds are worse than the coal wagons is up to you. Comment down below if you have an opinion. But um, they are era one and... Uh, Obviously, my other locos have used up everything else I've got, so there they go, with Rocket. So there we go, everything working really nicely with Tiger and her rolling stock. And I think the loco is fine. It seems doubtful that this loco is particularly accurate or realistic, but at the same time, I can't show you a photo and say, look, this should be different, that should be different. As far as I can tell, no such photo exists. So even though this might not be 100% accurate and some people may decide to avoid it for that reason, at least we still have this locomotive. And I think it's unlikely that we will see another manufacturer come along and produce a Tiger Loco because there's just such little information out there. It would be very hard to make it accurate. So in many ways, this is the only way we would ever get a Tiger locomotive. In terms of the rolling stock though, yeah, that really is the disappointment here, especially given the fact that you can't buy Tiger at the moment without getting these horrible wagons as well. And I think that's a little bit sneaky and naughty of Hornby, to be honest. It's annoying. I don't really want these Colt wagons, but I did want the Tiger. And I think a lot of people will be in the same boat there. And Hornby have really taken advantage, I think, with that. But in terms of the loco, absolutely fine. Decent runner, looks good. A nice change from Lion as well, definitely a little bit different. Can't really fault it. I'm quite pleased with the loco. Let's have some ratings then on the new Tiger train pack from Hornby. The level of detail is pretty good on the loco, pretty much the same as on Lion really. Except of course, instead of having the beautiful coaches in this pack, We've instead got some Stevenson's Rocket Tenders painted brown, so that has to drag the detail score down a little bit. I think the Loco would easily be a 4 or a 5, uh, but yeah, have to consider the wagons. The performance, I would say, is middle of the road. I've given it 3 star. Same as Lion, really, really nice and smooth. Great performer at the higher speeds, but it is a poor crawler. It can't manage to run at the slower speeds. And at sort of 50 on the controller, it is a little bit fast. So I think if they had geared this a little bit differently, if the lower speeds were favored over the higher speeds, it would have been a better performer, but there's still nothing wrong with the way this performs. For the size, it's relatively impressive. The pulling power is within spitting distance of Lion as well because they're the same weight. Seven coaches or 0.05 newtons. It's not a lot. I think this could have been improved if the loco was heavier and had more die cast, but it's certainly more than enough to haul plenty of Era 1 rolling stock, so I don't think there's a huge problem with this. The mechanism is four star. Generally, the quality of the mechanism is really, really high. You've got proper bearings, plenty of pickups, relatively easy access to the DCC socket although it does just have a three-pole motor. I think a five-pole motor could have improved the performance here. 
Rocket, I believe, has a five-pole motor, and that is better at the lower speeds. So something similar here would have been really good to see. Similarly, the quality is four-star. Not too bad, really. The build quality on the Loco is good. It's a fragile Loco, but it's okay. There's a fair bit of die cast. The frames and the smoke box are made of metal, which is pretty good. I'm not so keen on the paintwork. The banding, in particular, doesn't look as good as on Lion. The quality of the wagons in particular isn't fantastic. They are very, very plasticky, very light, not a lot to them. And a little bit more die cast on the Loco wouldn't have hurt either, particularly as Rapido have managed it with theirs. Value for money then, £229.99 is the RRP and it's £10 less expensive than the Lion Pack. But of course the Lion Pack came with beautiful coaches. This pack came with Stevenson's Rocket Tenders, you guessed it. And I don't think £10 difference really reflects the difference here. It's actually poorer value, I think. And what really irks me about this is you can't buy a Tiger locomotive from Hornby without buying these terrible wagons as well. And these wagons are very expensive, yet utterly naff. But still, you've got to buy them if you want Tiger. That's not cool, in my opinion. Tiger should have been available either without the horrible wagons and perhaps with some proper coaches or it should have been available as a standalone locomotive. But yeah, the wagons definitely drag the value down. Overall then, that is 6.60 out of 10, or a grade of D. That is a little harsh, I think, because the loco itself is lovely. But like I say, the wagons do let it down. So into the logbook it goes, eighth place below the GP7. Yeah, not too bad if the wagons were more accurate or not present, then this would have had a higher score. So there you have it then folks, that will just about do it for my review of Hornby's Tiger Train Pack. Didn't really see this coming when Lion was announced, but I'm really glad that we did. It is a little bit of a, a sort of cynical repackaging of existing Hornby models, and that's definitely the case with the coal wagons, but with the Loco it's a little bit more than that because at least some effort has been put into making the Loco a little different and a little bit more realistic than it would have been if it was just a repaint of Lion. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm quite impressed with this. The Loco is definitely a very welcome addition to the collection, and I'm looking forward to running it more in the future, for sure. But let me know what you think. Do you think the train pack is worth it? What do you think about the value for money? What do you think about the wagons? Do you think they are as bad as I do, or are they okay, in your opinion? The same sort of thing is true. I mean, we don't have a lot of great material on the actual Liverpool and Manchester rolling stock, but at the same time, I've never seen anything to suggest that they were just Stevenson's Rocket Tenders painted brown. <laughs> but um, I don't know, maybe that's accurate. Maybe I've been unfair. Don't think so, though. Anyway, that's about all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, folks. Thank <laughs> you.